Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Load of Balls. Uh, this is our new uh, enterprise that we're going to be starting up with uh, Zoom. And I suppose whenever we get back up and running in normality, we'll be doing interviews, not there person to person. But at the minute, um, we're doing it remotely. So we've got the Encyclopedia of Down Football, Ronan McCartan. Ronan, how are you things? Oh, not too bad. How are you keeping? Good, good, good. Stick the side of you already. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I, thought I, was getting a, I thought I was getting a break from you. Now you bring me on the Zoom. <laughs> and we're also joined by Mr. Kulku. Michael Kicker Kane. Kicker, how's things? All good, John. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you doing, Ron? I'm doing well, Michael. Good lad. Now, I suppose that, that like, with, I was talking to Kicker, and, and what I wanted the, the show to be about this, this week was um, the year Kukui had. Um, you know, extraordinary year for, for the club on a whole with, with everything that, that, that went on. Um, unprecedented success throughout the, the ages. And the seniors and the ladies as well. Yeah, some some year, uh, probably never be repeated. Um, not in our wildest dreams. I think we would win, would we won. But I suppose reality is at home now when there's nothing on. It's nice to reflect on. But hopefully football will get back up and running soon, and we can hopefully defend a few of them titles. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, just want to take this point now to, to salute our um, frontline heroes as well, who who are doing a tremendous job. Um, some you know friends, families, all involved in it. So, um, thank you very much for for everyone that's that's um in the NHS and on the front line as well. Um, Ran of Gorman even dropping beers up the Ronan there, doing his bit for to keep Ronan um stocked up well. So, no, but thank you everyone and uh, keep it going as well. Lose me some cream eggs. <laughs> you forgot the cream eggs. There you are, Gummy. Get the cream eggs going. All right, so, Kick, I suppose we'll just start by, at the very, very start, it was the time um, the news broke around the county that Cocoa's management team, um, everyone was shocked at the appointment. And, and just, can you take us through it? What, what happened and, you know, how, how he's managed to convince Mickey Moran to come down to Cocoa? Well, like everything else, uh, 2018 wasn't as successful as the previous years. We're obviously going for seven in a row and it didn't happen. Now we got the final with a very depleted squad and nearly nearly won it. But um, just the the whole committee and the club felt we just needed the, the thing whole, all refreshed and just a different voice. And there's a few names touted around, but uh, Mickey Warren was the first one and the, probably the only one approached. Um, there's a, he saw a small subcommittee, including a few players there with big influencers, went and spoke to him, and he was very keen um, from the from the get go. And then he went away and thought about it, and come back to the club. Then and he proposed bringing Conlet Gilligan and Paul Devlin from Ballinas Green with him. And once he was once he accepted the offer, we weren't for a fusion. It was a, a dream management team in every way. And then it just really. Uh, it had happened pretty quickly, to be honest. Um, but uh, it was a, a real co- great cup to get. You know, the man that had won three ulcers with Slack Neil in recent years, and obviously we craved that Ulster title. And it, as it turned out, he probably was the difference in the end to get us over the line. Yeah, and I just want to bring in Ronan there. Ronan, um, I'm sure whenever you heard the, the news about uh, Mickey and, and Colin Wilkin coming in and um, Paul Devlin as well, um, you know, it probably was a, a statement of intent from Kulku. Yeah, absolutely. Like we all were sort of wondering who they were going to get. There was, there was loads of names bandied about. Um, and it was pretty obvious that Kulku were, were chasing that Ulster, Ulster title and no better man in Ulster to, to bring it home for them. So um, it was just a, a massive statement for them to, to bring it and, and uh, Connie uh, coming in as well, and, and Paul, they, they've done a brilliant job. Um, obviously, your first year in a new county was very hard for them as well because they, they wouldn't have known players um, that they were coming up against. So, like, uh, I think next week we, we get a bit of football because they still have that knowledge now. But like, I'd have been in matches, and like Connie Gilligan would have been writing notes. and Things that that man was writing down just baffled me. Like I, I, 
there were times not even happening on the pitch and he was writing down, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I'd say the, the attention to detail that they probably went to was was startling, like, um, and listen here, the proof of the pudding, like, uh, it all worked. No, definitely, and like, as you said, there were, there were many games and, um, you know, it was it was interesting to see what, what they were actually looking at in games because, as you said, there wasn't too much happening, but, um, I suppose the league campaign gave them a, a sort of a feel of, of the main players in each team. But you were dealt a blow in the, in the league kicker. There was, there was a couple of injuries that happened for Daryl Hanlon and, and Kelly Dock. Daryl obviously coming back from a serious um, back injury and then doing his cruise shoot. Uh, that was a severe blow uh, at the time. I remember, it, um, I think it was Regina Player's driver that Friday night. And right. it was the train on the Tuesday. Um, the cruciate obviously went uh, an absolute nightmare for the lad personally, but for, uh, it was a massive, massive blow to the team because he's a not just a good footballer but a leader as well, you know. And then we Doc, he was struggling basically from the get go all year. He was with the county and then he came back and he played a wee bit, but Danko was always giving him bother and surgery was the only way he was going to get it mended. So hi, we dealt two major blows and probably in the, you know, the early in the league, um, we weren't setting the world alight or weren't making much noise, um, but. I suppose Mickey and Connors and Paul were try- trying out boys and giving different boys game time and different positions and stuff. Um, we actually were flying in the Ulster League to begin with, straight away. Uh, and then we sort, sort of slowed off a wee bit as the, when the All-County League, but we only lost a couple of games all season, so you know, we're probably, just because we weren't beating teams out yet, maybe, um, that were pre- been previous times. Uh, we pe- left people maybe scratching their heads at times, but... Uh, no, uh, th- them two blows came, and obviously we knew early on we weren't going to have them long term. So the the fact that the guys got were, impl- or were bringing other boys into the team and implementing stuff and staying with them, um, the younger men got them primed for coming to the championship stage. And um, there's a few guys obviously that stepped up and uh, proved a very adequate replacements for them. Yeah, everyone, the 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 young fellas coming in, the um, if you can just go through, like you know, what you knew about them coming up from the underage, not there as well. They really stepped yeah, well, up the mark. Probably the main one would would have been tied around the, the counties from maybe the last four or five years would have been Shailen Johnson, obviously following on from the two brawers, but um, he had a very good league campaign at the start. But probably the the ones that on earth really was um, who really took to it was like Brian McAvoy, obviously come out of nowhere. This year and just become a mainstay in that team, um, and then you had Anthony Morgan and um, Justin Clark as well, who had an excellent year. So, um, like them young fellas did, they played all our finals this year. They probably didn't set out to play that. Like Eighteen months ago, they didn't think they were going to be playing that level. So, the impact that they've had is brilliant. And again, probably could you always just bring through now three or four young fellas each year, which just adds to that panel that they have and. It allows them then to just make everything so competitive. Like we we played them or we watched them a couple of times just for the championship training, and mm-hmm. we must have had maybe 40, 45 boys training, and like that's colossal numbers. And I'm sure the games would be would have been excellent as well. They're in house games, so it just brings on. And Conor Lavery obviously commented about that too after the one all story. He says how much them young fellas and how much the, the panel pushed them to the panel of colour. So it was very very good. Like there. Them young fellas have really added to the whole setup. I suppose that the, 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 you're talking about the younger fellas. Maybe the you know the more important one was getting the, the older, more established boys to stay on another year kicker. Ah, yeah, that was that was massive too. Um, uh, I know after the 2018, uh, 2018 final losses, a few boys uh, definitely pondered their futures. You know, um, but obviously the the change in management and refreshing the whole thing and a new, new voice and all encourage them boys to give it another go and it's turned out now that them boys are mad to keep going and um, there's no retirements um, they're, them boys were they were the driving forces all year they were just playing like they were in their 20s again not that there's a big lot of them like uh, over 30 um, there's maybe four or five boys all in uh, on the on the starting team that was over 30 but they were really key players Aidan Brannigan and Connor Lowry in particular joint captains they've been about for years Like, but not just them you had Niall McAvoy returned after he took a year out uh was a massive player in defence, and then you had you have the, the, the boys that maybe run some, um, like Sean Hanlon, Charlie McAvoy, 38 
39 years of age. Mm-hmm. And boys, would they bring the training and the attitude they have and just them in house games, as Roman referred to, them boys are them boys are standing on them games and they're pushing the boys on all the time. So it takes that, obviously, to, to get you to the levels you need to be at to win things. But um, it was a massive... Getting the new management, I think, was a massive reason why them boys kept at it. Um, them boys, like if they had a, when it went into the sunset, they had seven championship medals each. They could have retired happy men. There's many men to be glad of one. But um, no, they were champing at the bit and actually this season, pre season, and the first three games of the Premier's early, them boys were all out again, flat out, uh, training and playing away. So it was great to see. No, it's a, it really is like, and it's, you know, uh, whenever you get to a certain age, the body starts to get a wee bit sore, and you know you might you might you might ease off in the training. But you know it's great to see um, them boys, you know, still still going uh, all guns blazing. Like, but I suppose we'll we'll go through the uh, the championship starting off, and I'll just list the games here, kicker, so that you know just a refresher. So you, you played on raked, and just stop me if I, if I get any of them um, a wee wrong or or it's on raked, and then with Strava. Then it was the burn um, drawn match. Then it was burn. Then it was the Clondoff match, and then it was on to the one point final. Leading up to the to the burn um, to the burn drawn match, um, and Rick Restraver um, Restraver gave us a wee bit of a, a scar. It was it was nip and tuck for for a wee while. I think Oral Gold McMahon um, threw a spanner in the works for you. Just weren't really sure about him. Um, coming into the game, that's right. Yeah, we played with Stammer not that long previous to that in the league and in Paddock Park and won handily enough, especially after the game Stammer gave us in Gilku, which was a real humdinger on Easter Sunday last year. Um, we were lucky to come out well in that day as well. But um, no, that challenge we entered Stammer, it, it nearly the Kingdom game the first half, we were actually a point down at half time, we were very flat footed that night, uh, but the uh, Strava game was a wake up call in many ways um, because while well, we were doing enough to win games, um, we knew there was bigger stuff coming down the line. And as you said, Strava really put it up to good that night, probably a lack of experience in key areas was the reason they didn't see it through. Um, and again, Strava went on to play Bourne as well, and it was a similar outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, just that wee bit of experience, probably seeing Gilku over the line. And then that obviously brought us to that, uh, the first Bourne game. Uh, a game, to be honest, we should have. Seen it through. Um, they were cruising that night and let it slip and burn, burn, come back and obviously forced the replay. And uh, I actually watched them two games in recent days. Uh, there were two cracking games of football. There's some it's on stuff played in them, but I think a big part of the two, Kilku, like, well, the, the strength of the squad is good. The young players hadn't played much senior football at that stage, especially championship, so they were still finding their feet. And you're without Keelum, Dara, Ryan Johnson, and Aaron Morgan, four. County standard players really, um. So, you know, it was you were depleted playing in them games, not using them as excuse, but it was it was just wasn't it wasn't as easy. And obviously, when the as the boys came back and things, you know, it, it, the strength of the panel improved after that. But um, no, that them games uh, set will be up very well, and it's been well alluded to by many. The down championship this year was the hardest, hardest ever probably to get out of, and. Obviously, it's set set Kilku well on their way after bigger things. With the uh, Ronan, we, we went to most of the Kilku games. Not um, the way they were set up this year was, was a bit different from from other years. And uh, do you think the way that that the set up tactically allowed teams to, to maybe hang on to their coattails a wee bit, or others before you know it was it was nearly game over, just coming into the second half? Yeah, there's probably an element of that. Um, Probably the, the big thing was probably with having the sweeper in that they played a lot with this year. Probably you're, immediately you're taken out of forward, do you know what I mean? So you, you don't have the same players, but um, up, up front. But they, as Jordan Kicker says, there they were always just doing enough. Like I went to watch them play Burn in the first league game in, in Kilku, and they were brilliant that night. And um, they didn't win by a, an awful lot, but they're just playing really good football. Um, and you could see the sort of the way they were playing on the ball, um, as well as the way they were playing off the ball. But it, the kicker says there too. The, the young fellas probably first first taste of championship football. I really think that down championship last year was harder for them probably 
bit cheeky to say, but Dan Dan Ulster because they, they they done they took care of Mahar Felt and they're going like quite comfortably. I felt um in Ulster, but like Burn they were they were in, on the ropes against Burn and um more point as well in the, in the final. Um, I think they were really challenged in, in down and probably as you're saying the, the quality in down in, in Division One and club football is probably improving an awful lot now. Um, with the league changes, so that like, it's not a, you're not going to be expected just to blow teams out of the water anymore. You're, you're going to be playing tough games. So, um, but they never really looked. Like, they were always just doing enough, and like, you always sort of felt in the first two games they were going to get through. Once they get through against Burn, the Clondoff game they got through quite comfortably, and then one point they were always sort of just a wee bit ahead. One point just couldn't get ahead of them at any stage. Probably their first championship final for a while. So. They probably find that, but the the way Kilku played, I think, was probably as Kicker alluded to there. They maybe had an eye a couple of months down the line. They sort of knew what they were playing and what would be needed till till one Ulster. Yeah, but with, with the final Kicker, um, it was a game that I that I think the most of the the county kind of wanted to see the uh, up and coming Warren Point team against uh, you know I think it was Kilku's eighth uh, consecutive. Um, appearance in the final um, it was really war of attrition just one mistake or one bit of brilliance was going, was going to win the game and in fact it was a deflected Conor Lavery pass in the, in the Dylan Ward that, that sealed war points fate yeah that's right it was a real uh, real tough game it was as tough a game as we've had the final in a long many a day and, and, and right throughout the last decade uh, one point win and obviously that goal was the clincher um, Dylan, who was absolutely brilliant in the Down Championship, uh, he uh, he came up with a big the goods that day with a with a lovely chip. Obviously, the pass fell lovely for him, but Lavery's intentions were always to get a goal, as as he always does. And, and Dylan uh, obliged, obviously, with the help of the deflection. But even at that, uh, Kilku went three or four up, but uh, one point never gave in. Ross McGarry had a great chance to palm a goal in that and just went wide. Um, we were. I wouldn't say hanging on, but we're, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't an easy game. Um, we probably there was a stage after Dylan's goal we probably could have kicked on and won be more. But one point, an excellent team, like I said in the show here last year, that they were dark horses to the championship, and that proved to be them um, the night again Bally Hole in the semi final. They were absolutely brilliant. Um, but no, they they give us a real real great game. They're, they're a real good young side, and Kaku obviously come out on top by a point and. There's many finals we won by many, much more than a point, and it didn't help us uh, further down the line. But I think that game really stood to Kilku and it meant so much when that final was won that day. There was a, even though there's a lot of in boys with seven previous jumps medals in their pockets, that one was a, a massive moment because new management in the first year to, to to lift that Franco Air Cup and regain it back because there was a lot of hurt after 2018. Um, we were devastated to lose that game. Um, there was no excuses from Kilku about a depleted squad and stuff, but uh, that one point game was, was the one. Obviously, the one replay was a massive one too because it showed one thing that the hunger was still there. Um, that game was going away from us at a time in the second half, but a lot of boys stood up and were counted and scored two late goals to Tinchett. And it's moments like that and take games and wins like that that really stand you in good stead and build character and the. Uh, it just proved to everyone that the hunger was still there and this team wasn't going to just lay down uh, to nobody um, after being written off in 18. Yeah, no, and a, and a player that, <clears throat> Ronan, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, Ryan McAvoy had a great year as well for in the Down Championship, I thought, as well. Um, you know, stepping up for the free kicks on the left-hand side and obviously you got um, Paul Davin on the PD on the, on the right-hand side. But um, Ryan... What I like about him is he shows emotion whenever you know things are going well. Fist pump to the crowd and that there as well. And it's always good to see you no know, footballers enjoying what they're doing. And you know he, he proved to be a big player uh, in a couple of games for for Kilku in the championship. Uh, I was absolutely massive, Ryan. Um, he could have played like he, his own versatility. Probably is you know is hard on him because one day he's full back, the next day he's midfield. But no matter what job he's asked to do, he'll do it. And, People don't realise, Ryan, why he missed out in minor football this year by one day. 
Mm-hmm. He's only a club like, and mm-hmm. he's such a big, strong player. He's some future ahead of him. But uh, as I said earlier, when, when Dara and Doc got injured, he was one of the guys that came in and stepped up. So, well, there's someone else's misfortune proved uh, his gain, and he was a massive player for the Blue this year. With the, um, would there have been much celebration then? I know you're saying that it was like uh, getting, getting the championship back to Goku was, was, was firstly, you know, the main target for, for Goku getting the down championship back. But what was the, the, did you reset the goals then and think, right, this is time for Ulster now? Or like, what, what was the feeling then? Well, it was just, uh, everybody was elated to win the championship, obviously. Any, any team that wins the championship is going to be delighted. So, uh, Sunday night we'll come down the road and there's a, uh, up in the new community centre, there's a bit of a homecoming and uh, everybody was happy. So, the, the plan was to go down to Quinns and have the night of it. And usually, uh, it leads to the Monday. Um, but Mickey Moore pulled the boys in to the, the meeting room that night and he basically told them to enjoy their Sunday night, but be back here in the morning. We'll be training at 7 o'clock on Monday night. I expect you all to be here. And, there wasn't one boy who went out on Monday. Uh, everyone was training on Monday night, which was it was a big ask. But them players, you know, dedications, they're well used to it by now. But they knew there was a man here, and we had three games away from achieving what we've always craved. Mm-hmm. It was an Ulster title, and there was everybody enjoyed their Sunday night. Uh, but that was it. it. Was back to basics on the Monday, and it wasn't dwelled on too much. The, the, the next focus was more the felt. We played obviously Glenn the following Sunday, and um, that Mickey and Conlet uh, put great study into that. And uh, obviously, that was the, the first game in Ulster, it proved to be my felt. Um, but no, the, there was there was a, a great enjoyment to win the championship, and it was well celebrated on the Sunday night. But it was a square mark of the players that they could just go straight out on the Monday night again uh, and refocus and set their goals for uh, an Ulster title. Yeah, Ronan, as a, as a manager yourself, the the benchmark is Kilku, obviously, in, in down. But, you know, how impressive was the management side of uh, Mickey Moore and Conf Gilligan, you know, the matchups and, and the tactics involved? Yeah, no, I thought or, I thought what I sort of said to you, like, the, the detail they obviously went into, because they, they knew they were sort of playing catch up, maybe, with their knowledge of um, of the players in down. And probably is. is the way they probably reacted so quickly to prepare for Ulster, probably Ulster probably should have done because they would have more knowledge of the teams in Ulster than they would have maybe of all the teams in Down that they come up against last year. So um, I just thought they like there's very seldom they got a few few things wrong. Do you know what I mean? I know people were saying at the start of the year they just weren't the swashbuckle and Kilku of the past, but they, they, um, we we were at that and. Um, one point game in the, in the final, like, and you could see the sort of changes they, they need to make. At one point, started that game very, very well, you know what I mean? But they, they adapted quite quickly to it. And it's just the attention to detail that they seemed to go into. They knew their matchups that they, they wanted, and I think that sort of really came into fruition in, in Ulster. They very few matchups they didn't get right all the way through to the Bally Bowden game as well. They, they I thought they were excellent, and um, the matchups they got. It probably helps when you've got the players that they have to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they definitely they didn't miss too much. No, definitely not. Then. Kicker, as a, as a as a club, then um, you are on the Ulster. Uh, what's what's involved then behind the scenes whenever you're you know you have that success? Well, I there's uh, obviously logistically when you're traveling to away games, also there's a lot to organise. But um, normally. We've, we've just kept it the same as we have in recent times. We would uh, have a breakfast morning for more or less the supporters and that would raise a few pounds and maybe pays for the team bus or something to eat for them. And there's a lot of goodwill out there too. People come in and sponsor the money. But uh, no, the, yeah, maybe not so much in the first first round and semi-final, but the, the preparation for the final was serious. Like There was a lot of training when ended the weekend, the weekend before it getting used to going up to Omar and stuff like that and um, getting the routine and things like that. But uh, they make it easy for us because the, the, the players just make it all about football and uh, it's, it's all about them really and all the way through is put the, put the, get, you know, the logistics in place and get everything ready. But it makes it very easy. I don't see it as a hard job at all, but um, it's nice when you get it, when the whistle goes and you win them Ulster club games. Or it's just some feeling. Even that... Uh, Derry Gonley game in the semi-final just to 
I know we were in Ulster finals before, but and people say it's because you're behind. We're not Derry Gunley team, but they were so hard to beat, big, strong men. And you know, it's when they, they the whistle blows at the end of them games, it's just real fulfilling. And you know, there was no celebrating after first round or semi finals in Ulster. It was back to back to business on the on the Monday nights for the players and the supporters and the like. Also, committee people, we just they got preparations in place, to whatever needed to happen, like yarding tickets or whatever. You know, so it's when you've plenty of good helpers and good workers around the place, it's it's very easy. You know, when there's plenty of people willing to put up their hand to help out. The the Ulster campaign then kicked off with uh, Marafelt, was it O'Donovan Rossa, then on to Derry Gonley. Um and then the semi final was um Derry Gonley. They you know you were I think you were slight underdogs for that game because people were thinking that you know that, as you said, you know, that a couple of players in the Joneses brothers that the big strong men, a lot of inter county uh, experience. But he's, he's prevailed over them, and then on to Neve Connell then in the final. Um, you know, this was this is what Kilku were waiting for for the past like, eight years. So, like, how did you feel going into that game, and and you know what what's your memories of it? Ah, oh, it's uh, one of the best days of my life, I have to say, and I'm only a, a supporter in the end of it all. Uh, what it must have felt for them players, fulfilment wise, must have been something else. But um. No, in the lead up to it, uh, obviously they beat Clintibbert in the semi final and were very impressive. They nullified Conor McManus and um, the, 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 the players like Leo McLean and the Thompsons and that. Like, they, they were going into that final as, as favourites. And, but we knew, uh, and uh, Mickey and Conleth had you know, the, the expertise, they knew we had the markers for their key men. And they, they, that day, talk about matchups, they got matchups completely right that day. Like, we. Aidan Brannigan was put into midfield that day. Ryan McAvoy was put to full back to mark key players, and the jobs them boys done was superb. Like Aidan Brannigan actually scored a goal in an Ulster final, and um, Mark and Kieran Thompson he put him in the back foot who maybe wasn't comfortable chasing back. You know that that's just an example of of the detail the engagement into to see who could mark who. But they got the matchups totally right. But uh, no, uh, the, the result. You know we lost in twenty twelve to Cross Lane in a final. Probably weren't expected to win it at that stage. We're only really making our breakthrough. The uh, Slack Neil defeat hurt um, because we had chances and we were very, you know, we were very close that day. Um, but this one here, we knew, you know, going into the final, there was everybody knew the cross mid lanes, the Slack Neils, the big teams. There wasn't that many in there, and if we could just put one big performance together, uh, we could get that Ulster title. But there was no, the, the hype wasn't as mad. Um, Mickey and them have great, cam- they can bring a great calmness to the place. Even among the supporters, while well, everybody's looking forward and your flags are up on a big day out and all that, there was a sense of more a confident approach going in that and a, a greater sense of calm. Um, there was nobody getting up tight or doing anything, even the players, nothing rushed in the pitch. Everybody was keeping their heads and focused on the task in hand. And they, to be fair to the players, they'd done everything they were asked from the management team. Uh, they, they got it completely right. Um, and they, they produced the goods in the day. Now, they gave us a few scary moments. They were cruising in the first half. And, Obviously, they got two goals for half team, which um, was was worrying. But uh, a great response in the second half. And, uh, to, to, to when Sean Hurston's whistle went that day, I'll never forget. It was just an outpouring of emotion, just a lot of relief too, because you didn't want to begin down as a team that you know won eight down titles in eleven years, but failed in three Ulster finals. You it would have been it would have stuck with you forever. But that monkey was off the back that day when the whistle went and. It was definitely more celebrating done after that one. I know that. <laughs> and Ronan, just about the <coughs> sorry, um, the match itself. Uh, you can't. They obviously had a had a more direct game plan, and to an extent, it was, it was working. You know, they got the two goals just before half time. They weren't in the game at all, and then the next thing, I think, they were only a point down <coughs> at half time. So, you know, the matchups were great. Yes, but um, do you think that? Do you know, Kilku then, the half time came at the right time? It, it did in that time, like, Kilku should have been, been out of sight in that, in that first half, but as you say, like, they kicked them. Probably they seen that maybe some of the luck that, um, or some of the joy, sorry, that Derry Gonley maybe got in the semi final from the, the Joneses and, and, and being very direct against Kilku. So that was definitely a ploy they, they put in. And Yami Guinness and full forward who was completely nullified for the first probably 20, 22 minutes, and then all of a sudden he was involved in, in both goals, and he got one of them. But um, 
like I I thought that probably don't know what way maybe New Colin were, were looking at it regards to their matchups, but I, I thought that um Aaron Brannigan probably was the main danger man in the semi final. But um they seem to really sort of cancel each other out in the final. Arn and, and his marker, but Daryl just come alive, do you know what I mean? And, and the semi final or the semi final and the Ulster final, he was just couldn't be stopped. Um and he's been doing that in down for years. So I, I don't know, maybe did they maybe not did he come under the radar a bit maybe in, in for that final because he, he caused an awful lot of damage. But um Regards to the half time, and again, as you say, half time and straight away at the start of the second half, he, he made a fantastic move and finished off a, a, a great again. Conor Lavery with a, a wee bit of magic, looking for the goal, open open things up and start of the second half for them. So they're um, but they should have been out of sight in the first half. But as you say, probably um, we've heard a lot about how calm Nicky Moore has been um, with them this year. So probably whenever they got the chance to back into the, the changing rooms. And then they were, they were up, you know what I mean? No matter how the sucker punches come, they probably looked at it at that point of view that they were they were one and a half time in, in an Ulster final, so they just reassess and then they knew what they had to do there for the second half and they got on. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's a good point that you make about you know Aaron, Aaron Brannigan and, and what happened there. I, I honestly think that they, that, that they were expecting Aaron Brannigan to be the attacking half back, whereas Aaron then went into a man marking role in the, in the final. Um, which left Dabs then, you know, that freedom. Whereas he wasn't man marked to come out of to come out of the half back line, which which to their detriment because you know he really was fantastic that game. Um, like who was the outstanding players in your Ulster campaign? Would you say and and you know, um, who really stood up? Who stood up to the task now? Well, obviously, um, everybody played their part. You <coughs> know, as a team, everybody uh, not, uh, played that. You know. Wonderful football throughout, but uh, Darren Brannigan, obviously in particular, and Conor Lavery, if you go from one end of the field to the other, um, they were two, probably the two most special players we had, uh, uh, especially in the final. Uh, like Darren Brannigan scored one two from half back in an Ulster final. He was he was massive. He was just brilliant, and we knew that we've seen him doing that for years, and just to do it in the big day, just to provide that leadership and come up with them big moments was. Was brilliant. And he had a big part to play in Aiden Brannigan's goal too. He made the obviously the dirt and run that created it. Laverty at the other end of the field was involved in, in two seven that day. Um, he only scored a point himself, but he was involved in uh, making two six. Um, so them two players in particular stood out that game. Obviously, Aaron, uh, Owen McGarrigan had scored six points in the uh, in the semi final and was was you know he's a Donny Gold panelist and was 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 seen that he was tipped to. That he was going to do a lot of harm, and never give him a sniff of it. Like, and Aaron can do that. You know, he can he can play the attacking brand one day, or he'll do a job for you the next day. Like the, the job he done, he was reverting back to the Bourne games on Liam Kerr as well. Like, mm. so you know, there's a lot of other players. You know, the, obviously young Ryan McAvoy, Dylan Ward, all them boys played their part. Um, I thought Ryan Johnson uh, come into his own in the semi final and final of Ulster. He, he had awful problems with injuries and stuff. But uh, he really stood up and, and, and was counted again, Derry Gonley and, and, and Clenties. And for just big moments, and pa- Paul Davin was as steady as ever. And you know, it was one of the main mainstays for winning kickouts and that, even though he was playing a centre half forward. But he, uh, he he won a lot of dirty ball and he was instrumental in putting them passes into Laverty and Jerome and that who'd done the damage. And obviously, them young lads too, like to play at 18, 17, 18 years of age to go in and, and, and play in big games like that was. Was brilliant. The like Gandhi Morgan, yeah, Justin Clark, Sean Johnson, Ryan McAvoy, all all massive players and big futures ahead of them. But to do it and play with the maturity they did was was brilliant, you know. So and then obviously the older players who all who all led by example, um, right down right. to the way were on the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it was just, just it was one one campaign that'll never be forgotten. No, the, uh, the the thing I always found difficult with Kilku was you had to mark their six forwards, you had to man mark their six forwards, and then you had to man mark their <laughs> their half back. So you're running out, you're running out of players <laughs> to play against them. But it, like there's, the threat from Kilku can hop, can come from anywhere. And you know, as you said, you know, Paul maybe wasn't as as um, 
uh, scoring as, as heavily from play this year. He seemed to be playing a, a lot deeper, maybe in verting back to midfield because of the the forward runs from the half back line. Was like it's great that you know that a team can adapt to any situation as well. That's it. Like you, you a lot of versatility. I used Ryan McAvoy's example earlier. He played full back games, played midfield games, and he's one of the younger, young, younger uh, lads. Uh, it takes that, and uh, but it takes everybody to be rolling the one way, and uh, you know, doing what the manager asks you to do. And any time Mickey Moore and Eric Connell getting asked them boys to do anything, there, there was no question. They just done it, and those boys sacrificed their games. Like you know, uh, you know how to do marking jobs. You know, Michal Rooney, for example, lost out, uh, probably was playing steady football all year, was brilliant last year. Again, very godly, we needed to change. We needed Aaron Morgan in again because we needed a bit more physicality around the middle of the field. And the, the reshuffle probably cost Michal his place in the final, which was very hard on him. Um, but a brilliant young player, good attitude, never sulked. And that's what it takes, it takes boys like that. You know, if you, if you boys there huffing and talking to their mates and saying, oh, that's, that's not, there's none of that, none of that nonsense like that. As I've said before, like I've heard many management teams, and I've never heard of a word of dissent against them. Man, everybody just have nothing good to say, and you know, the 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 players' man approaches is, I guess, with young young players in particular love. Uh, where years ago, you know, boys needed to kick up the the hole to be honest. With them. Uh, but nowadays, I think when you put the arm around boys the way Mickey Moore and Gilligan them do, I think you get a, a better response out of it. And obviously, it proved that this year. No, Ron, it was it was impressive. Now the the way they done it and and the way they got performances. Like, um, if someone had said to you, Chuck Brannigan would have scored a goal in in the Ulster final, you know, I wonder what odds you would have got on it. Well, the funny we were sort of talked earlier in the show about maybe how sort of reserved Kulku were, um, and the build up to the final, and maybe in down, but there was there was something. There's something nice to watch that first half because that was the Kulku that we had known for the last sort of 10 years the, the way that they just ripped down these the shreds. They literally did. Like they just the hot knife through butter every time they went through and it, just, it was relentless. Um, and I said only for the couple of those at the end of the first half they were, they were out of sight. Um, and then they sort of picked it up again in the second half but they were always just going. But like as you say Ian Brannigan to the engine and, and, and then Brannigan's and Eugene Brannigan as well was, was fantastic that day so we must have kicked two or three um, in the first half alone so they were just I said that first half was, was as good a football as for the the occasion that it was too was as good a football as I've seen any team play and then obviously the, the backs of the wall stuff needed to be at the end as well and as, as kicker says there and, and Lavery was at one end of the field he was Probably the last man to touch the ball in the Ulster final. He was, he was back orchestrating a bit of possession mm-hmm. to keep Andy's at bay. But um, I said, Glenn, Glenn, he's probably approached the final where they, they thought maybe they, they usually done all teams would have a better reputation for being a bit more defensive and um, work the ball through the hands. But they probably did try to be a bit more direct against Kilku. They maybe fancied their, their chances of it. But they definitely they left themselves exposed at the back and they couldn't contain their honours. Um, as um, Kicker says, like that, that's just a, that's a sign of, of maybe the world bit, bit more and done. Um, and Connie from Paul, they, they probably exposed their weaknesses. And uh, they put it no better place to mm-hmm. show it. That's the final. No, and Kicker, I suppose that it can't be understated as well. You know, you had Bobo Kane, who was who's probably one of the best goalkeepers in down. Um, and then you know, I don't know where. Young fella comes in and and you know some of the saves that that he produced was, was unreal as well uh, to the Ulster final. Ah, uh, massive! Like you could, we all knew Marty was a brilliant goalkeeper, and he probably maybe didn't push himself. You know, with the, you know from minors after minor level, he was happy enough to play an all game in the thirds, and whatever. But the the story that went behind him was unbelievable. You know, uh, obviously it became the Niles misfortune. Nile was wasn't doing much wrong and. The, the guys made a change for the Bourne replay and you know it was it was a big gamble at the time because you were bringing a guy in that had just played a, you know a, against Maybridge thirds in the reserve semi-final a couple of weeks previous mm-hmm. and conceded a few goals uh, but he came in and his, his, his shot stopping in particular was absolutely brilliant but his, his kick outs too you know 
you couldn't fault him and for a for a lad to step up like that. But to be given that chance too, I think was massive, like because many managers would have cast that guy aside and said, Okay, oh, yeah, he's just happy playing thirds. But <laughs> he, he came in and he got a few league games. Uh, obviously the way Niall Stag again was on and Stevie was injured, so uh, Marty came in again one point in a league game and held his own, done 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 okay. And after that basically he just kept put uh, playing away in training and his chance came and he took it. Um, but some of the save again Derry Gonley in particular, one that'll never be forgotten. She and McGullion come through from half back and he just took part of Rose one out. It was a great save. Um but uh no he, he had a he had a massive role to play as well and it's a great story, you know, a guy that in the same season that played for the two thirds team and went on to play in an all Ireland senior club final. It was crazy like but you have to give like it was a big just big uh, like leaving Nile out was a massive it was a gamble that could have backfired if yeah. the coup had lost again weren't people would have pointed the finger why did you do it? Um but Marty proved himself and he showed the goalkeeper he is and he was he was superb and it's great to have that option. Um obviously Stevie was the main goalkeeper for a number of years and then Niall uh, once Stevie's injury started getting the better of Niall came in and was was flawless, especially from place kicks and yeah. and, and kick outs, uh, in particular. But um it's a good option uh, Good thing to have when you have three top goalkeepers and Stevie's back from engineer too. So um, it'll be if we ever get playing football this year, it'll be interesting to see who the number one. <laughs> Always a good battle to have, but you know it was uh, like, and it was I, I was watching the situation closely as well. Whenever you know now it was coming off from from warming up with with Marty and that there, and you know he's always encouraging him, always you know patting him on the back and that there, um, you know what you which was probably hard to take for him losing out in an Ulster final whenever he was, you know, you know, playing, as you said, place balls as well. Like, that's one, he was hitting them 50, 60 yards sometimes. Like, um, so, you know, it's that togetherness that I think that Kukui have. Would you agree, Ronan, that it's just second to none? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like that song, when you go last and go, they all pull together. They, um, the, the the thing that probably for, for me is we I remember watching that it could have been the game um Kuku played last year in Bally Martin. Don't know who it was against Kicker. Um it was a league game he's played in Bally Martin. Down Patrick was No, it wasn't the Down Patrick game, it was an R game. Did you play maybe towards the end of the year? Maybe it was Down Patrick. Um it was because we, we had training but I just watched the boys warming up by themselves and the three goalkeepers were, were warming up together and keeping themselves um, too close. So like that sort of stuff there, like usually you'll see two goalkeepers in the in the in a club. Probably the other one that got a bit of a gripe against the boy at starting and they wouldn't even talk to each other. We've all seen it, you know what I mean? But uh, probably the fact that two boys are brawlers as well, but there was there was the three of them were that were warming up. Yeah, and doing their, their drills and going through their activation, so it just gives you an idea of just how close they are. And I said that we we went to watch a couple of matches, and they're they're always just close. They always probably a reputation, but sure, that's what you want. You know, what I mean, you're, you're not gonna win anything or, or be as successful as a have by having a load of divides in the camp. No, uh, and that, that's very true. Like, and you know, player that uh, probably got a, a wee bit of bad press this year. Um. That that people were saying weren't hitting the heights was was Jerome Johnson, but um for me Jerome was the glue that that made that four lines you know gel together. Um, he was doing the unselfish things. Like he was the one running back tackling, you know, and and maybe leaving that space for for Connor Lavery up up top. You know, Jerome special talent, and you know with, with his uh, he's always dangerous for a goal too kicker, isn't he? Oh, massive player. Like when Jerome came on the scene um, as a very young player, he was nearly parachuted straight into the starting side, you know, from 2010 when he came straight out of minors. Um, a real goal getter, um, a real inside for. Just he was, at his early stages, his career was unmarkable in down football. But what I liked about him last year was Mickey and them asked him to play a different role. Um, they asked him to come out the field a wee bit more work a wee bit harder and make things happen in parts of games and a lot of times then stay in and I think Aidan Brown against Gold referred to it earlier in the Ulster final Jerome got that ball and he could have very well turned and blasted it himself 
but he took the percentage pass, he, he threw the goalkeeper, he gave it to Aiden, palm it into the net. That was just the maturity he showed. And if you watch, I've watched a lot of them games back. The ball that Jerome won and a lot of them was brilliant. He was getting 60 40 balls, but he was winning them. And he maybe wasn't running, turning in big score lines, but he was he was still making things happen and he was creating space. And he just is is selfish on selfishness, you know, for the system that Kaku played was a major reason why we won the Ulster title. Mm. And the goal again, Mahara Belt, just proves the other side of his game, which we all know for is rattling the net. <laughs> Um, he, he, he could still do it but Jerome's attitude this year was brilliant and he was a real positive influence and he became a, a real leader uh, especially towards the latter stages of the year and um, he had his bad luck injuries and it took him away well he's, if he, something like Darren and I had a few serious ones as well but he's bounced back and he's you know he's a brilliant footballer and a real good lad no, it definitely isn't. It's probably um, helped that you know the younger brother as well, Colin Shailen, um, making his impact this year. Uh, Joan probably stepping up as the bigger brother, um, you know, taking him under his wing. You know, talk us through the, the you know we've heard about this young fellow for years now, Mickey. How how good is he? And and you know, uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but um, <laughs> he's he seems to be uh, Koku's big white hope now coming through. Okay, uh, he was a prodigious talent from no age, you know, and he obviously had a lot to live up to. His two brothers getting, you know, won everything the whole way up the years, stayed in the senior team, you know, won loads of championships, stayed under the down team at 19 years of age, both in one Huggins versus Coleman. So he had, a, he had a lot to live up to, and, you know, uh, but there's many persons said this boy's going to be better than both of them, and obviously he's about to go yet to reach the heights that, that they have, but. Uh, if you if you watch him on his own age group in particular, he's just he's a class apart. He's just you know senior level. He does what he has to do and he works hard. And like again, Brainsford this year in the league in the senior league, he just absolutely run him up and kick points from all angles. And then there's other days he's out and he just do a job for the team. And he, he nearly got you know it was Kukui nearly started using him as an impact sub because his pace and mm-hmm. his running ability late in games was was stretching teams, but. Uh, Mickey and them seen that he was needed in an Ulster final and they, they booked him in there and he played he played very well that day played, used, to, used the ball well played with great maturity and uh, no he's, he's a massive future ahead of him and this year stand on big time you know we, his first full year in senior football and uh, obviously he won a minor championship and a senior championship in the same year it's unbelievable uh, the, you know the Ulster under 16 win two years ago he was the man and when Kaku Miners went out this year in the semi final, he wasn't playing and it just showed that, you know, he was his loss was nearly uncalculable. He came on at half time and kept four points and nearly dragged the team over the line. But at his own age group, he's just a different gravy altogether. And I think he'll become a really, really classy senior footballer. You know, this year that will we'll stand him in good stead because he was asked through different roles for the team and done them. And again, you were talking about attitude, he could have huffed. You know, there's other Miners maybe getting in ahead of him at times. No huffing, he knuckled down and he got his just rewards in the end. No, it was a, it was a day for to remember for him, no doubt, and, and for the club as well, Mickey. So, you know, winning that Ulster um, title, um, please tell me you went out on the, on the Monday night or the Monday uh, on, on the Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, was the, what was the media like? You know, uh, after the Ulster final, you know, how did the club, um, like what what's involved there as well? After you know the commitment from from the club to the team as well after that. Yeah, well, there's a in the PR side of things is it got busy around that time, and um, obviously in the lead up to the Ulster final, the BBC made a wee documentary uh, with both clubs, and it was heard then proved to be a, a real good uh, view. Um, you know the. Yeah, the Sunday night after the match, just the, the, the I would say we all stayed in the, in, the, in Hilly Park for an hour, and uh, everybody just it was an outpouring of emotion. Just the, all your relief, all the joy was all spilled out in that pitch that day. And you know, we went out obviously the next night and the next couple of days and partied hard and, and really enjoyed it. Because it's if you don't enjoy successes like that, what's the point? And oh, that's it. Um, the the fact we got over the line and and and, and just. The way we done it, and you know we're hanging on at the last. We're cruising in the first half. Just there was a roller coaster of emotions the whole and the whole game. But uh, 
it was brilliant. And then obviously the, the media attention around it was, was class. Like, you know, we had Kilcoopers on the map, basically, you know, those were, we were heard off up, up to that point, but you're on the map when you win an Ulster title. You seen what it meant to the Geese and, and, and um, Donegal Cassidy's team there last year uh, when they won it. And maybe we didn't put as many videos on Twitter, but uh, <laughs> we, we, we certainly enjoyed it as much as uh, you were, Your Snapchat was close. <laughs> <laughs> I have to delete you now. <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh... No, the, the documentary was was very good. Like, and, and I suppose that you know the interviews after the games from the boys as well helped. Like, you know, was was droll. Like, um, but you know, as you said, pickle coo on the football map. Everyone in Down knew how good they were, um, uh, and they just proved it in Ulster how good. Um, and how playing was everything a bonus then after that, Maggie? Do you think you know coming up against the Leinster champions? Um, what was your feelings going in that? Uh, it was a wee bit uh, weird the way the, the, the championship was this year. And obviously the final was usually St Paddy's Day, but the all Ireland semi-final, Bally Bowden won the next week. Uh, uh, they were playing a week later. And uh, when they won, we knew they were opponents, but it was played on the 4th of January. So it was basically at the, the, the tail end of the Christmas holidays. So we won the Ulster title on the on the first day of December. Mm-hmm. So he had four full weeks basically to prepare for an all Ireland semi-final. So... Well, we enjoyed, and while the players enjoyed, in particular, the, the few days after, they were back out that Wednesday night, training again, and they made a the decision. Um, do we be happy with our success and enjoy our Christmas, or do we park it and knuckle down and give this all Ireland City rattle? And it was unanimous they agreed that Christmas was put on hold. There'd be no, there'd be no party and there'd be no nothing that would give everything to get to an all Ireland club final. Mm-hmm. It's not every day you get the chance to do that. So the the, the boys said that the, 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 they will knuckle down and they had trained and trained as hard as they could. Uh, right over the Christmas period, different times of the day. Um, nothing, Boxing Day, they were out that morning at nine o'clock. Um, but there's no, people just said, it's one year, let's, let's give this a rattle and see where it takes us. And obviously that game in Braffney Park again, Bally Bowden then. Um, there was a lot of homework done there too. Um, I know the, the work going on behind the scenes and, and, and looking at them and their key players. And you probably want to uh, touch on that game as, as you progress here. But uh, running a little bit earlier, uh, the man marking jobs that day, Colin Basquell was seen as the main forward for Bally Bowden. Darl Brannigan was put on the real marking job and done it brilliantly. And I also got the feeling of a goal by putting Basquell on the back foot. Mm-hmm. So you know, boys, the, the attention to detail that Mickey and them brought to that and, and who they're marking and, and the work they went in, video analysis, not beforehand, on what players were going to be marking who. Like even they played Meath in a friendly week before it and you could, you could tell by that game again Meath who, who was going to be playing in what positions the next week. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, uh, it was great that the guys gave that commitment, you know, as, as a club. We couldn't ask much more for what they've done. They brought great joy winning an Ulster title. If they had made a decision to say, ah, we'll stay away, but we'll enjoy our Christmas, what could you say? Like, yeah. you couldn't say too much, but the boys are made of different stuff. They just knuckled down. And, and even, the, obviously, we went on and won that game. There was no party in that night either. It yeah. was just, you know, full focus on the next day. Ronan, just with the, with the, the, the Bally Bowden game, uh, were you surprised that, at, you know, one team looked as if they enjoyed Christmas and one team looked as if they trained over Christmas telling yeah, the truth, yeah. didn't it? It did. It was funny the the way the way they approached it is as um Michael says there like Colin Basquell uh, particularly we, we all know obviously the the broar from um being in the county Colin just wouldn't be as well known. Um but he he, he had a fantastic Leinster and a fantastic Dublin campaign and he was he was touted to, to run a mock like and he was totally nullified, and like Darrell Running got a man of the match and an Ulster, Ulster final and an All Ireland semi final. Like, you just unheard of, like, do you know what I mean? And talk about big game player, but he, um, the, the matchups were, were really spot on. That was probably the, like, as I said to you earlier, like, once they got out of town, I thought everything sort of just clicked for them. Um, and even in the final, which they, they lost, like, uh, I think their, their tactics were spot on. They like completely, Swashbuckle and Cora Finn were just totally, um, 
didn't have a lot of answers for them. They, they, they had to grind it out and probably just a couple of things took their toll on them at the end and but just a bit more class, maybe a bit more experience. Um, but like their their matchups and their, their tactics for the All Ireland campaign were spot on in both games. No, and like with with the the games there if anyone had any doubt about Connor Lavery being one of the all time greatest um club players, like I think now it's put to bed because he was absolutely fantastic the last last few games, wasn't he? Oh, I gave a master class that day again, Bally Bowden. Um just his ball went inside and uh, it's just like the, the goal Ryan got in the first half. There was a Larry who got a ball and he could have caught it, so slowed the play down. But he, he seen the move, the man run, he flicked it on, opened the whole thing up, go. Uh, just that that brain, the football brain that he has is second to none. He just knows where to be and knows where to. But he can also dig in and work hard. Like we were under the course in the last 10 minutes of that game. And Larry just come back and demanded the ball, won kick outs, bought a few frees, done what he had to do to, 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 to release the pressure on the team. And he obviously took a black yard at the last two, you know, it had to be done. Um, it, it was a Bally Bowden player making a, a run and he took him out and you know it, people might see it as cynicism and that but when you're in the cusp of getting to an All-Ireland final for a, your club um, you'll do anything to win and you know that, that game in particular he was he was outstanding and he obviously backed that up with another very good final performance as well No, the like, I'm sure whenever that the final was somewhere for the semi-final you just you, you couldn't believe it that you know this was actually happening you were going to be playing um, Cora Finn probably you know one of the greatest club teams ever. So, um, you know, how as a as a club as a, as a, as a community, you know, what was it like getting into an Ulster final there? Ah, uh, it was that day. It was it was a wee bit. It was a different. Sorry, all, sorry, all Ireland final. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it was a it was a different feeling when the whistle went again. Bally Bowden was it was more. You were sort of half in disbelief. Is this really happening? Like you know. <laughs> We were in the Ulster finals before we lost them. We knew we were there, thereabouts, but I um, won it, and it was just an outpouring of emotion. But the semi final was, is this really happening? Like everybody was just, but it was a great day. I remember we went down to Cavan that night before, and some of the supporters, myself included, and just the build up to it and all your wee club playing a big game like this, and the dubs come with the town, like the, the Bally Road, and the, the, they're just the same sort of mentality, their supporters anyway, and the dubs would have, but uh, they were cocksure themselves they were going to beat us out to get that day. And, Look, yeah, things we got a wee bit of luck along the way that day, and things fell fell for us. But uh, just that when the whistle went that day, it was brilliant, you know. But it was straight down there on the Monday. The you know, as I said, there was, there was plenty of work went in the two weeks up to that final. The players just concentrated on what they had to do. We took everything out of their hands in terms of logistics and organising tickets and whatever else. The club took control of that and decorating the village and looking for sponsorship and. There was some work on ten in two weeks. When you look back now, it was it was, <laughs> it was the craziest January ever. You know, the, you from the fourth to the nineteenth, winning the game against Ballyboden to playing in Crook Park. The, the preparation that went into that was was unbelievable. And luckily, there was nobody found wanting. When you're in a situation like that, everybody's gonna jump on the bandwagon, as I say, and, and get involved. But it was it was pure class. I never enjoyed anything as much. Normally, January is a grim out month. You're back to work after <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Dark way, but it was, as it turned out, it's probably the only positive of this year so far. The way things have gone out, yeah, yeah. Never no, that's true. Money, even though uh, <laughs> things didn't happen in the end, worse in terms of result, but just the experience of it and the for everybody, like for the whole community and the parish, and just the the joy that it brought. Like everybody was just on a high nearly for for that period of time, and uh, just it was just nearly a, there was there was disbelief there too. You, you couldn't. Actually, when you're lifting the papers and reading them and they lead up to the final and saying, this is actually happening, we're in an all Ireland Club final, this could possibly happen. Um, it was pure class, like it was, there probably is no word to describe the feeling among the people. Um, but to be fair, I'll give the players some credit, they stayed out of the hype of it all. It didn't, they just knuckled down, they trained the way, they done what they had to do, they just treated it as if it was another game, you know, on their, on their journey, as they did with every other match. And obviously it was, they enjoyed the build-up as well, but the, the effort they put in, you know, on them two weeks, the, after that Bally Bowden game as well, was second and on, they gave it everything, dirty out, wet nights, mm -hmm. and did, nothing, nothing else mattered, that was that was their key goal, and at the place was high activity, it was brilliant, you know, the 
the BBC were in town on the Thursday night, the radio was there and the Saturday RTE was down. It was just something that we'll never ever probably you may never you know, get that feeling again or get that chance again. But uh I'd always anybody involved in the GA I'd wish it on them because that's it's powerful stuff for, for, for everybody. I just, uh, I'll never never forget it. Uh, do you see whenever they were um you know, with the, dealing with the media and that, there was there any like remit from the from the club from the committee or from the from the management saying, you know, play it down, don't be getting carried away, don't be saying this, don't be saying that, or was it just that's just the way the boys are? And you know, no, well, like I'll be honest with you, in previous times and under previous regimes, maybe that was the case at, at times. You know, those gazers for the instructors and what maybe not what to say, but just the mm-hmm. angle to go with. But this year, uh, I was obviously dealing. I organised the media night and stuff, and. Uh, with all the, the press from the length and breadth of Ireland and you know, we had it on the Thursday night after the Valley Bowden game, which was a week and a half before the final and that was surreal that night too, the crowd. But obviously the we put up five players and Conleth Gilligan is part of the management team. Obviously Mickey doesn't do a big lot of media. So Conleth uh, was there and Paul Dalvin as well. Um but like I in that room and the boys were just so just talked about what their careers were and their football and there was no nothing, nothing to hide. It was just mm-hmm. all about all positive, all good stuff. And you know, I was delayed. Just obviously, MPRO was delayed to see that because sometimes when you're in your job, people are you know giving the same old cliches. It's just mm-hmm. no good. Like some of the reads, you know, I really enjoyed the build up to the final. Mm-hmm. You know, the interviews the boys gave were so honest, and they're just told it as it was. You know, there was no bullshit. There was, they were just telling them how much they were enjoying it, and you know. Obviously, when you at Corfin was, there was no point our boys talking about Corfin because we knows the, the greatness of them and the team they had. So we were we were talking about making it about ourselves. Why not? And uh, no, there, there was no instruction given out, and I think uh, it proved that. You know, it, it, everybody was just give their opinions as, as to what the campaign had, had went past, and there was no no oil laser on. There's no oil, you know, gamesmanship and trying to. You know, get back to Cork and no way it was just yeah. all all about the club. What uh, what was it like going into to the All Ireland series and being underdogs? I'm sure it's not something that you are used to in Kilku. Do you think like it was something that you played on, or or you know, um, coming up against the juggernaut that is Cork and was it were you just going in hope, or was it we can do this? No, I'll be honest. We're going with full belief because mm-hmm. that's the that's the nature of the management team that we have. They just put full belief. Um, they studied Corfin thoroughly up and down, seen their strengths, which is which were many. And there was obviously a lot to look at and um come up with a system that day to play against them, which nearly worked. And no, there was there was none of that. It was just complete everybody had a just a complete faith in the game plan and I thought, you know, it it was so, so close, uh, agonizingly close. Um, but there was no fear factor. <laughs> like Corfin are a good team, but mm-hmm. Kilku boys were going down that road with Leif were taking the cup up the road. You know, yeah. we just seen this as an opportunity. The the, the, the videos they watched off Corfin, they seen them at their best and they seen them when they weren't at their best. And there was the same chinks there that maybe we could get at. And there was things did happen that day and it might have been the most prettiest game in the world to watch, but and you know, or maybe went more defensive than, than we usually would do. But what can you say? When you I watched it back and it was hard a hard watch, but just probably that wee bit of lack of cutting edge up front that day, and maybe just in front of the post, we weren't con- convinced, con- con- uh, you know, some chances weren't taken. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, Jesus, they got so, they got, they got tactics so right and so close, and, you know, full credit to them, you know. But again, we don't like losing in Kilku, and it's, it's one that got away. Yeah. Roland, what, what, what the tactics. We shocked the way Kilku set up. Uh, going into half time, I think um, it was two three. Um, how did you think it, 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 it was panning out? I, I don't think anybody foreseen it. Like it, it definitely just came out of the blue. Um, but as I said, needs must. And at the end of the day, you're, you're at that level. It's not. It's not a a trait of the club, they don't play like that. So at the end of the day, you're coming up probably against arguably one of the greatest club teams ever. And um, certainly in the last sort of 10, 15 years, they've been phenomenal. So 
they had to maybe try and change something. And like for me, I I did expect them to play just a go go for it. Do you know what I mean? A, a big big all them, but they you couldn't you couldn't even dare doubt what they done because it, it did get them so close. Um, and they missed they missed an awful lot of chances. Like in the, in the first first half, they they kicked three or four. Um. Wides and they weren't even from good angles either. They they weren't from shooting positions, so probably the occasion got to a couple of them. And um, just when they were shooting like that, but like the, the tactics, as as much as it wasn't what you were expecting, it, it nearly worked. Um, yeah, you know there seems to be you know in every story there's there's heroes and and the the unfortunate as well. And, and uh, you know it was uh, Dylan Ward who, who was sent off kicker. Um, you know, as you said earlier, he had a great down championship. You know, important player for Kilku, either playing half back or or half forward. So, you know, it was unfortunate for him to be to be sent off on such a big occasion. Well, funny enough, I did uh, say earlier there that Mickey brought great calmness to the whole thing, and that was like we our discipline this year was second to none. There was nobody getting sent off in big games, and uh, before it did happen in games, mm-hmm. the Slack Day game in Uri, for example, Dylan and, and Eugene Brannigan got the line that day. And that cost us probably in the end because you know we couldn't couldn't do without them. But this time it was it was so hard to take because the first one was when you look back it was nothing. Uh, it was a case of handbags. There was nothing in it, and we didn't feel it was a yellow card. But obviously, when you're on a yellow, then Dylan was prone to it, and obviously Dylan Wall, the Cardiff Finn player, realised that he wasn't a yellow. Dylan's a big fella. He plays, you know, he, 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 he's a good. He's probably the best tackler in our team, and. He bought one, like, and he knew, he knew what he was at. And look, we've done many things like that in the years, and players with the line, it's not, it's not nice either. But they, they, they played, they played on it. And Connor Lane, he was, he was always going to give the second yellow, and was, was wild hard, you know. But uh, it, it maybe didn't. We, 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 obviously before extra time, we got it back to seven all, which was great with fourteen men. But I think the full effects of Dylan's sentence off when he was realised in extra time, when. The players were just out in their feet. There was an extra twenty minutes football, and after giving nearly a whole second half, you know, in a big pitch in Cook Park with fourteen men, it was massive, and it was very unfortunate in the player in particular because on a big day like that, it's a heartbreaker. Like you, you don't go out to get sent off in the Ireland final, and in my opinion, he didn't deserve it. In a lot of people's opinion, he didn't deserve it. Do you think the referee? Happened. Sorry, do you think the referee was was? Going back on his decision with the, with the ten minutes injury time and you know moving the the free kick up about forty yards, you know, do you think, do you think he was like saying, you know, maybe I got the send off wrong and and could could deserve a, a second goal? But what a, what a free kick from from Paul Devlin. That's right. There's no doubt. It was in the back of Conor Lane's mind uh, that it was harsh, mm-hmm. and he had sent him off. So referees seem to have a, a habit of doing that, to try to make up for the mistakes and. Thankfully, he did take it up a good bit that day, but I was <laughs> nervous. When I couldn't actually believe it when PD put it over the bar. It was mm-hmm. to draw it. I, I, and I never was as confident at, when they went in running up that tunnel. I says, We have these boys, they're rattled. They've only scored seven points. Ronan Steed was the only player they had that was playing the mm-hmm. form. And we just had so much right. And I was so confident. Went back to 15 men. I thought this was great, but obviously it proved. Uh, it wouldn't do far, and to be fair, they were absolutely brilliant next to their time. They just they run amok, and our boys were right in their feet. But for, for the effort of them, them 60, 70 minutes, whatever they played in the first it was, it was pure class. Like, did you have that heart and desire to come back and come back and keep going? And it was so close. Like, Larry had a quick read of Eugene, had a goal chance to goalie really saved it. There were a few other opportunities went to beg, and Larry missed one himself, which he normally score was eyes closed. There's, when you add all them, when you, when you lose a final and it's fine margins, you look at all them things and we look at them with a microscope and say, what if, what if, but you have to look at them that way, what they've done to get the draw against that team and how they stopped them. You wouldn't have knew Ian Burke was playing that day, mm-hmm. totally nullified. Gary Sice, massive player, wasn't nearly the same impact. So people, well, I'm looking at the ones we missed, but it was the pressure we put on them to stop them scoring and you know, to nullify their greatness, and you know they were put to their pen or collar that day. Like the last two Irons they played again, Doctor Crooks and Ian were just getting them out the gate um, with double scores on both occasions. Obviously, they beat us well in the end, extra time. But we obviously were out in their feet and through the tail, and maybe with 
you know, in extra time once they went four or five or six ahead, it was just a, a bridge too far to come back at that stage. It was really a, to get so close. That's the that's the heartbreaking one. You know, you had them to pin another collar, and it was, it was there's no consolation saying you took Corriff into a draw because we went down the road to win the match and it didn't happen. It was gut wrenching defeat in the end, but it was just you know, like some of the moments and the memories that day even though you lost will live you forever like it was so it was great to be part of it and what what was the the, the feeling uh, from other teams and other supporters towards Goku make it get to the final and, and you know was, was it well received ah big time um, obviously you build a rivalry in your own county and the, you know this that's, that's always the case but we got great support from down and other clubs and the amount of letters and emails and tweets and Facebook messages we got, and not just that, the, 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 the goodwill out there, people put their hands in their pockets. Sponsors came to us, we didn't have to do nothing. Like, mm-hmm. we, we put a, two big screens up in the village, uh, advertising people wishing as well. You know, people were coming at us looking to, you know, give you a few pounds. Good luck in the final. It was unbelievable that the support we had that way, and can't, can't we just can't be thankful enough to them, businesses, and just general people, and people from all over the county. from you know, from, from Banbridge to St. Patrick, we were well supported. Those clubs uh, run buses down to Crook Park. They mounted down people around as Mahers beforehand. They mounted down people. It was like going to a down match. Um, you know, it was great to see it too. And look, uh, I mean, when the bridge and that were, and you know, when the rallies, we all went, uh, well, you'd arrive with them down, you, you went and watched them in Ulster and supported the, the the team. And, you know, but that day, I was very, very, not surprised as such. I knew there was, you know, once a down team gets there, uh, there's goodwill and people wanted to see, you know, what happened because the boost that would give the down as a whole, you know, if we had won that in Ireland, it would have been massive too, you know, just a, a 94 since then won that Ireland um, at senior level and it would have been lovely if any club and down would go and win one, but it just wasn't to be in the end. And But no, I, I, we can't be thankful enough for the goodwill out there and the, the support we got on the, the whole journey. Ronan, how impressive were you with... with Cuckoo throughout the throughout the year, and do you know, were you um, surprised to get that they got the All Ireland final, or do you think there's there's still more to come from this team? Um, no, I, I kick it. will vouch for this here. I said after the 2018 final that Cuckoo won win a lot last year, um, and our wee WhatsApp group we talked about <laughs> on them. So, the, um, I. I, I did think they would go well. Now, at, at times in the year, did, did they impress? No, but uh, at the start of the year, I thought they would go well, especially when Warren arrived. Well, this, is, this is it. Um, but as I said, the, the longer the year went on, they, they certainly they certainly looked everything that, the, that they are. But probably the big thing for me was, as I said, alluded a couple of times, we were up in Kulku for a championship match, uh, we saw, and we had a training session as well, a walk through one night. Every time I was up, PD was up practicing, um, and for me, I, I sat and watched. You know, I'm right, John. I was, I was there about an hour before training, and the uh, a, a two young fellas were throwing the ball back to him, and he was just pinging penalties, pinging penalties, and he kept hitting the corner of the net. And they, it's not by chance that that penalty, when when it was really needed, in the against Burn, he put it straight in the top corner in a pressure situation that he was prepared for. And you're practicing freeze and practicing kicks and, and an all iron final and to, to rescue it for your club. He, he pinged one, but you know, what I mean, I, I would say Kilku people had so much faith in him as a builder, you, you wouldn't want to find anybody else. And like for anybody to catch Kilku, you need to be putting in that effort. Like, if, you're, if your players aren't putting in that effort, you, you don't deserve to catch them. You know what I mean? Because the depth of work they're putting in, and as he said, Kick says at the start, there's no retirements to the same club again and, and more youth coming through from successful youth teams, the minor champions previously as well. So they'll they'll be be now just working twice as hard um to, to try and go that one step further and like they're they're back to score one now, they've, they've a down first round of the championship to, to negotiate the whole way through it. So um but all last year, there was just a feeling that Moran was brought in to, to win an Ulster, and, and when he done that, then it would be one game to an All Ireland final. But you couldn't, you couldn't not be as a as a, as a Gaelic um, 
football in person, you could not be impressed with the effort and the work that Kukui do. Um, and they they play football, as I said, for the final. <laughs> they play football. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the that everybody, everybody knows them for, but um, they're a good team to watch. And they've so they, they, they have an array of talent now coming through county squads, minors, 20s, seniors, previous seniors. Um, so they've got a, got a big panel and they want to take some catching again this year. The other thing I, I, that I think will work in their favour and is that they're, they've got a break now from <laughs> from obviously uh, the football, so they're going to have that hunger again, whereas maybe at the start of this year in the league and out there, they might have taken a foot off the pedal, but um, obviously the times we're living in now. Um, but just on, on that, man, what do you think you know, could be the possibility or, or you know, is there going to be a league this year or is it going to be a group championship or, or that kicker of any ideas or well that's a, obviously the minute it's all on the unknown isn't it mm-hmm. um, this social distancing crack is obviously the big thing uh, without a vaccine for this nightmare of a disease but uh, I would always be, uh, be positive and look at the glass half full and I'd, I'd, you know there's you lift the media and times there and there's people just so negative and there's been no football this year just writing it off you have to look back a month ago this only really come here and we're in lockdown probably a month you know if we can get out of it, you know, in three months, you're still only in the July. I think from if we could start playing football in August, you'll get plenty of football crammed in between August and November and December. Um, obviously, it'll be with a difference. There'll be no league probably the year. Um, it's just being puzzled to do that. But I'll be of the hope that this thing is uh, possibly, hopefully, going away and the vaccine is maybe on the way to us and maybe with measures in place that we can have football again. Obviously at club games, bar maybe a county final, you don't have overly massive crowds and you could you could you know it could be worked. And I'd really hope you know, what format to take it in is another matter. I would I would assume it'll be a knockout championship. Um it, it, obviously time constraints will determine that. But um I would like to see every team getting at least uh, seven or eight games of some sort this year. Um not just the senior level but even right down the youth grades not a it's hard, boys, you know, especially maybe older players that are back for another year. They're, they're one year maybe closer to 40. Um, the time next year comes, so you, you, you just hope that the... Look, Gaelic games and Gaelic football sport in general is good for people. and It's good for, like, even for people going and watching games that, you know, it's, it's, we're used to it, but it's our lives, it's pure class, like, but... And maybe this disease has, has been set uh, on us to maybe realise what is important at home and whatever else, but uh, I do... I do hope uh, and there's, there is some football this year and I'd love to I'd love to be able to see the boys out and defend their county title that'd be first and foremost which again that's probably the hardest part getting it down mm-hmm. Ronan just for for mental health even for, for players supporters uh, maybe not managers but um, coaches um, you know it is important to get back to sport you know and for recreational as well like yeah, no, uh, that's a very good point. Like, um, they said being people need to now going out for their, their daily exercise that they're getting, uh, they're doing different things. It, it does sort of show you how important ha- having something is. Do you know what I mean? And it's only when it gets taken away from you do you, do you actually realise how, how important it is. But um, I said, hopefully, listen, I, I'm not going to try to guess what's going to happen. I, I do. I agree fully with what. Michael saying there, like if you think about it, it's April now, like for three months is, is July. Do you know what I mean? Give them, give the boys three or four weeks to get up to some sort of level and let them play. Um, but I think if you if you look at it from a point of view, it's 2020 is is the year. You know, what I mean? there's nothing to say that the leagues have to be played in in April, May, and June. It's just because it's it's always been the norm. But, like, we're now out of the norm, you know. It's not, it's not the norm anymore. What's what's happened with this as far as so like there would be nothing better than having championship in, in October, November time under the lights. Like you always get the buzz in Yuri under the lights, but having games everywhere under under the lights for the sake of a one winter championship and then it gives them a shorter break and you can bring it forward again next year. So it I think a year of football, but again it goes by health, that is the most important thing here at the minute. But a few months is a, is a brave, brave long time, especially when it's when we're, we're going daily here. 
um, like there's there's vaccines trying to get done. There's all of sorts of work being done by the, the health service, which is just unreal. Um, so it, like if you take day by day for three months, it's a lot of work can be done. Um, I I would hope there'll be some sort of championship buzz for what you can do maybe to get boys football before a championship rather than just throwing straight in the, the worst thing you don't want is just one game and your season's over that would just be a disaster I mean, especially when you're talking about teams mental health like but the young fellas there you, you obviously be with us now doing the, the classes for um online it's getting people creative as well you know what I mean you've so many different challenges and people now have got just different ways of communicating which is, which is brilliant um but like the young fellas need need something as well you know you can't really forget about that. Young fellas, young girls playing sport, doing any sort of, not just Gaelic, but anything, they need to be out and they need to be mingling because it's not good to be cooped up for so long too and young ones not being able to see their, their classmates and stuff like that. Finishing schools and stuff, I never seen them again. Um, I haven't spent maybe eight, eight, 15 years with them, depending on what they're at. So there's a lot of things to consider, but I'm, I'm sure the, the government is trying to Irish government is trying to do it right now. No, definitely. And, you know, as I say, as long as everyone's safe and, and it's, it's, it's safe to go back to, to, to um, the social distancing and that there seems to be working. So um, who knows in, in three weeks where, where we'll be at, but, but, but we do keep our fingers crossed and, and hope that, you know, that it is um, going to work and, and we'll be back in the playing fields sooner rather than later. Kicker, just to, to finish off then, um, Dara's injury then, he seems to have seen him uh, doing a bit of skills and um, putting it in the top corner. So he seems to be coming back. Uh, he should be back ready by the time football starts up again. Yeah, well, that's where uh, there's, a, there's positives in this whole thing too. Um, he's not going to miss a lot of this season. Um, but uh, no, he's just, just said that we won on Twitter and whatever else to show the wee bit of skill in class he has. But he's now he's out. Counting the rows, he's out running and he's doing his rehab and he's in real good shape and he's he's doing the five Ks in good time. Yeah, uh, but uh, he uh, he'll be a massive boost coming back in the thing. Not even just for his footballing ability, but his leadership. You know, around that whole time he got injured, it was very easy to sulk and walk around, huff and stay away. But he, he was there all the time. You know, pushing the thing. Obviously, he went away to Australia then to get a bit of a break just to clear the head and you know get a bit of a holiday that he always craved as well so mm-hmm. he'll be coming back he's only, he only turned 27 the other day so he's still only a, he's, he's still a young enough player and, and Doc as well there so he had hope of, of the full 45 or 46 players to pick from um, oh yeah, brilliant will, will be in a, will be in a good <laughs> position the year again but here and, and down and down as seen last year um, Kingdom or Strever Clondoff born and Warren Point there was not much in any of them games so and if you look, I know we won Division 1 last year as well, but the league was so competitive right through. There was, like, the games we lost, we lost to two teams that went down, in Patrick and Kessel. We lost, that's the matches we lost last year. And that just shows the competitiveness of that league from top to bottom, there's not much in us, especially when you may be having your full squad out at certain times. So, we under, under oh, no illusions, while 2019 was probably unprecedented and unbelievable what happened. You know, that, that, that that's... That's, that story is over now and it's, it'll be a knuckle down if hopefully we do get back to action if it's health, healthy if the health allows it but uh, it'll, be, it'll be back to square one but I've no doubt in my mind that the, the determination and the same willpower will be there for the boys to succeed again because they know nothing else like they're you know they're at it from you know early 2000s a lot of them boys since they've been senior football and even the younger players that won them three in a row minor championships uh you know, they have nearly 10 years senior football behind them now and they're uh-huh. still only 27. So they, they know no other way and they'll be determined. They'll not want to... Calcuto, as I said previously, don't like losing. And mm-hmm. uh, even in a fight in a league game, we we don't like it and we <laughs> overanalyze it maybe. But uh, it's, it's probably what makes the club so strong, you know, that uh, you're always wanting to be the best you can be. No, and, and I can see why you're PRO. You've got... No easy games. Every every cliche coming out here, kicker with, uh, you know, uh, well, we look to each game as it comes. You know, well, I think, the, I think last year's results proved that. Uh, <laughs> they, they back up me. <laughs> Rony, um, you know, any suggestions how 
teams beat Kilku then, or or is it just um, you just hope for you get your matchups right and you know that you're you're trained and prepared well for them? Um, I have a, a lot of them things, you know me, but as Kicker said there, like, as, as proof is there, like, a lot of teams, like, down football for me, I, I think it's pretty strong, I, I really do, I think all, all the divisions are very competitive, so I, I, I think that Kilku's hardest challenge, again, probably will, will be in down, um, if they get out of that, they would fancy themselves to take an order on at Ulster, because they're, they're as good as anybody in Ulster, um, but like, one point, would find them would count themselves very aggrieved too. That they, they probably think they could have had a, a championship with the same management um, in place again. So uh, they're a good good young team. They play good football. Uh, they they pushed Kilku to, to as to probably as close as they could have had, um, and like Burn as well. So uh, there's three three very good teams I think in, in down that that will be going for the championship. Kilku ultimately the favourites, but. You just need to try and get your matchups right. You need to you need to have your homework done on them, and you, you probably do need a bit of luck um, on the day as well to, to beat them because they're exceptional footballers and they're exceptional experience now. Mm-hmm. And kicker, just uh, it really was the year of the magpie. So, can you just give us a, an oversight of what the the Honours Kilku Club won this year, if if you can remember the top of your head there? Yeah, well, it was on on the field there. Uh, Seniors won the Ulster League, Ulster Championship, Down League and Down Championship. Um, the Sagans won the Premier Reserve League and Championship. The Miners won the Minor League and Championship. Um, the Under-14 Girls won their, uh, I think it was a CRD Championship. And the Ladies won the Intermediate Championship. Um, so that was, obviously, other teams uh, all done their bit too. And, you know, were a part of that, but maybe just didn't get the silverware that the, 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 them, them teams did. But... The club then as a whole then got serious awards after the whole thing, you know, with mm-hmm. Ulster GA writers, the Gaelic Life Awards, the four boys got Gaelic Life All Stars and uh Ian four different well, the one different guy got Paul Davin got a, an All Star in Crook Park, along with three other boys that got Ulster All Stars. There's you know, got Ulster Club of the Year. Uh, you know, it was amazing like it just the the trophy cabin that uh I haven't actually seen it uh in recent times with social distancing and um, but uh, it'll take a bit of polishing uh, it's a nice thing a nice, a nice, a nice problem to have and look it was an unprecedented year we we're fully aware that you know things went well for us and we, mm-hmm. you know we really appreciate what we did win and, but we knew we, to, 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 to repeat that would be very very hard to do and uh, it's just it's back to the drawing board again this that's the beauty of sport, you know, you, you enjoy your wins while you can, and obviously in history it'll be good to us in, in the year 2019, uh, but th- there'll be a great drive there too for a lot of the younger players to keep going and, and you know, get more success, and the fact that them older boys kept at it for so long, and after many years of, of nothing at, at senior level, um, it just proves that it, it can very easily be taken away from you, and I think that fear of losing is something that always drives drives boys on and um, long may it continue no and, and boys just want to say thanks very much for for coming on this is our first um attempt at, at going on on uh on the air as we should say and you know i think you know two, two better guests to have so boys thank you very much um we'll be trying to put this up on uh youtube now this is where any whiz kids tech person that knows what they're doing um needs to needs to talk to me about it but boys um can't thank you enough lads um load of balls and and we're just, that was a, a an overview of um cuckoo's year to remember so thank you lads yeah John. No, no, John, i'd just like to compliment you on your show all last year i thought it was brilliant uh, for doing football and um, got a lot of positive feedback you know uh, everybody looked forward to it every week uh you know looking back in the week before and forward to the games the next weekend and it was really a really good thing to do and uh, I hope it continues and hopefully we'll plenty to talk about in the not too distant future well done cheers that's great thank you boys talk to you yeah. later thanks yeah, man okay. bye 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 lads.